Okay, this little webinar is uh, concerned with one of the optional modules on the MA in Digital Humanities, uh, Communication and Consumption of Cultural Heritage. Um, my name is Stuart Dunn. I am one of the teaching staff who uh, teach this module in the department. And um, what I'm going to do is just say a little bit about how the module is structured, um, some of the uh, things that you will encounter if you take this module, um, what the subject matter of the module is, and then I'll give you an example of um, some of the actual things that we talk about in uh, some of the uh, some of the lectures. So, the communication and consumption of cultural heritage is primarily about the material culture of ancient and historical societies, how we see that culture through the prism of our own history and our own subjectivity, and how that material is important today. And through all of this, we look at how digital methods and digital techniques and digital technologies help us to um, in, augment and enhance that period of under, that, that kind of understanding at each stage. Um, that is the kind of core that runs through the entire module, the role and importance of digital technologies, how we use it to understand the material past. So the module is taught by three members of staff in the department. There, there we are, uh, myself on the left-hand side, and Dr. Gabriel Bodard and Dr. Charlotte Tutman. Now, the module is available in the second semester of the year, so it is one of the um, optional modules that you choose for second for the second semester. It is worth 20 credits towards your degree. We um, give the module in the form of 10 two-hour lecture seminars uh, across the course of the term. Um, and the way these work is we have roughly one hour, maybe slightly less, of, um, of lecture of, you know, where, where one of us sort of pre presents um, uh, an argument or presents the information about the topic. And then the second hour or slightly less than an hour is either a sort of very focused moderated discussion amongst the group in a sort of seminar type format, or for some of the topics we undertake uh, practical exercises, which actually give you the chance to uh, deal in a hands-on way with some of the uh, with some of the material that we're dealing with, and the module is assessed in the form of one three thousand word essay, uh, which is handed in at the end of the second term. So, here is an example, or three examples, should I say, of some of the essay questions, the kind of questions that um, that that, that uh, get asked in the assignment. So discuss the main characteristics and advantages of one 3D capture method with examples, outline its application in the cultural heritage domain. So this asks you, of course, to discuss a particular method of a 3D digital capture of cultural heritage objects, usually in museums. So you have the opportunity to select which method you're interested in, develop your own methodology for asking whatever questions you wish to ask about it, and come up with a kind of structured argument of how it's applied. Discuss the limitations of quantitative methods, such as, such as ge uh, geographic information systems, Google Earth, etc., in the representation of places and spaces in archaeology. So this question, in a way, encourages you to reflect on the difference between space and place. What do you think we mean by those two things, and how we can represent them using digital mapping? and explore and account for cultural heritage influences manifested in a particular piece of popular culture of game, film, etc. So this is from one of the, um, from one of the lectures later in the course, uh, where we discuss how cultural heritage, how material history manifests itself in gaming and films. So um, we are quite open in terms of how we frame these questions. We encourage students to go away and sort of think about what aspects of the questions they're interested in, and then kind of develop their own approach to uh, answering them. Now, the full list of, or the top level list of topics that we discover, uh, that we discuss in the course is 
uh, is here. Um, so as you can see, there is a very wide range of topics that we discuss, but all linked by this idea of materiality of artifacts and how uh, digital methods deal, um, uh, are used or can be used and are being used to deal with them. A lot of the case studies that we draw on in the course of exploring these topics come from the galleries, libraries, museum, museums and archives um, sector. In fact, most of them do. A lot of the examples uh, within those institutions are in London. So there is the opportunity to actually go away and look at the collections that we're talking about in class. And I think a lot of uh, the, the present cohorts, cohort of students have benefited from, uh, from, from doing that. Um, but we uh, range across topics such as open data through modeling, multimediality, um, legal and ethical aspects uh, in the first sort of the first half of the term. Then in the second half, we move more onto the reception kind of side of things. You know, what is the significance of cultural heritage and materiality in the uh, in the contemporary world? So. Um, in, in this sense, we move from talking about um, the communication aspect in the first half of the term to the consumption aspect in the second half. But it's all very much, as I have said before, uh, united by this, uh, this focus on the role of digital methods and material and materiality. So uh, some of the case studies we look at, we look at inscription and epigraphic evidence. This is a particularly interesting area uh, for both uh, the publishing of texts and for the visualization of objects. Publication of texts because, of course, uh, inscriptions from the Greek and Latin worlds and also papyri, as you see here, these can be published as images of this kind, but they can also be published as machine readable text, which has been marked up using um, uh, epigraphic language standards, which means that we can interrogate large quantities of text in lots of various different ways. But as these three examples here, the materiality of what the, uh, the materiality of the objects that the text is actually resting on here presents very different challenges for methods such as uh, scanning, such as modeling, uh, and kind of uh, surface analysis and so forth. So we very much take a very holistic view of texts such as this. We look at the text itself and the object that the text is, um, is, is, is uh, uh, and the object that the text is, is written on. Um, reconstruction and um, the reliability of reconstruction in virtual environments, in digital environments, is an often recurring topic of the module. Uh, this is a very nice example of a piece of, uh, of, of a piece of cultural history. It is a uh, hominid uh, skull. Um, it is, in fact, a very famous hominid skull of which a lot of uh, very uh, learned discourse and interpretation was developed largely around the kind of reconstruction that you can see here. But unfortunately, this turned out to be a fake. This is, in fact, Piltdown Man. So this is a rather nice example of how uh, cultural history and um, the, 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 and the visual nature of cultural history can be misrepresented by reconstruction and the role of the digital world and the role of digital methods in how those sorts of um, um, uh, false narratives can be perpetuated is one topic that we look at. Um, we also look at issues such as authenticity and this, uh, this speaks to um, a large preoccupation in the field in the last few years whereby digital reconstructions of ancient sites and ancient objects must be absolutely accurate, they must be absolutely authentic. We ask why this is important and we ask whether it is really necessary to be too worried about visual authenticity or whether it is more important to drill down into the object and capture um, accurate uh, data about it and present it alongside the visualizations. Um, 
We also look at issues such as augmented reality. This is a nice kind of um, 3D remediation of some southern British Roman uh, Iron Age uh, dwellings. Um, so this uh, invites us to look at um, the affordances of 3D digital models. You know, what can we learn from reconstructing a pre-Roman Iron Age roundhouse of the sort that you see on the left here versus a um, sort of Roman uh, timber dwelling that you see on the right? You know, what can we learn about daily life? What can we infer? What do we know for sure? What do we not know for sure? We can, for example, um, populate models such as this with actual figures, as you see there. So, you know, this uh, gives us a window in on into a past which does not exist anymore. But we also ask how um, important, how accurate and how authentic that window actually is. Um, another aspect that we explore um, in the uh, later um, lectures of the module is we look at the role of social media in the transmission of cultural heritage and of responses to and views about cultural heritage. We uh, do various analyses of how institutions such as Yashmolian here make use of Twitter, how this has changed the public's relationship with museums. Um, we look at the impact around the world of um, social media in museums and cultural organisations. We look at the way that this fosters debate, this fosters archaeological narrative. And we look at the way that using social media in this way can, in fact, challenge and in some ways undercut official museum based narratives about the past. Uh, and we look at this from a variety of different angles. So. We look at um, existing initiatives within the social media world, like the uh, Ask a Curator hashtag, which is a kind of uh, annual event um, on Twitter where uh, museum curators around the world make themselves available online and people can tweet questions at the Ask a Curator hashtag and the curators respond uh, in you know sort of whatever or whatever way they see fit. Now, this raises very interesting questions about how the public can use social media to interact with museums, even if they have never been to the museum, you know, if they feel very strongly about a particular topic that the museum is concerned with. You know, this opens up new methods of dialogue, new methods of, um, of seeing those collections. And we look at the importance of how those collections and the um, importance of them of tra is transformed by their exposure to social media in this way. And, you know, uh, we, we can look at various case studies for how, um, you know, for, for, for how um, sort of questions get pitched from the physical world via the digital world. So, in summary, this is a module for anybody who has interests in material heritage, in cultural heritage, in archaeology and in reception studies. Um, in common with all other MA in Digital Humanities modules, we do not pre-require any existing uh, knowledge of either a technical or a content nature. Um, it is a very sort of reflexive and uh, open module that is based around, uh, which is based around dialogue in the seminar format with a strong uh, practical experience. And in terms of um, its contribution to equipping you with a career, this will give you, this module will give you a good grounding in how important organizations um, in the museums, libraries, archives uh, and, uh, sector is making use of digital technology and how digital technology is being used to form new questions about material heritage.
Hold on. Wasn't sure how to switch it off, so it's probably still running. It's okay, we can delete all that.